after the Sarasota Improv Festival. Uh, they went so well that we decided to keep on doing them. And uh, we're going to be doing them every Friday night at 7, as the logo behind me says. Now, as uh, for those of you who have been watching every week, you know how this works. Uh, I have... Uh, Picked, I haven't even picked that. I put a bunch of improv topics into a randomizer, and one comes up, and that's the one that I'm going to begin the discussion with, uh, with our guest. Now, this uh, the, our, this week's guest is a uh, friend of mine that I've known for a few years. Got to see her uh, perform several times in one of my uh, favorite shows. Uh, I, I believe uh, uh, the when I saw Orange Tuxedo was at the Stumptown Improv Festival in uh, in Portland, Oregon. And I saw them and I was like, oh, we need to get Orange Tuxedo to the Sarasota Improv Festival. Uh, and then uh, they came and then the, she came back the, the next uh, the next year uh, with Quartet. Uh, and we've uh, continued our friendship and our working relationship since then. And she's just an amazing, uh, amazingly intelligent and talented improviser. Let's welcome to our Zoom stage, uh, Carla Kukowski. Yes, Carla, welcome. Hi, Woo! I will. Hi, Woo! welcome. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for having me. No, oh, thank you. Oh, everything, you went to a different room. Everything. I went to a different room, yes. I, 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 that, that way you don't have to put up with two two images. <laughs> two wills. Just, <laughs> just one. Uh, cool. Uh, good to see you. Great to uh, see you. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks uh, for and, having uh, me. How are you doing? I know that we talked we talked briefly. You're in North Carolina yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, yep. Craig and I, my husband and I came to North Carolina back in June to kind of hunker down for a few months and get out of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was telling you before, I couldn't tell you anything about North Carolina because we haven't left the house. <laughs> uh, but it seems lovely from the windows. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot to ask you this. Did you guys drive across? We did. We drove Ooh. cross country and um, we kind of, it kind of worked out perfectly. We decided to go and like we left three days later. Um, and we just right before the spike hit with the numbers in some of these states, we just kind of made our way through and stayed at a okay. few hotels. And, okay. and I was a lunatic with the Clorox wipes. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you still, are you still a lunatic with the, with the Clorox wipes? I've, I've calmed down a little bit since we've been here. I'm trying to okay. save them. You got to hoard those Clorox wipes, the, the oh. little bit that you have left, right? <laughs> that was like a sign of, true friendship for us was that early on in this whole thing, our very close family friends, like it's like a family, another family of four. Yeah. And you know, and all, we all match up age wise, age wise and everything. We're all best friends with each other. And anyways, they couldn't find any Clorox wipes. Mm -hmm. And so we went over and it was right before the lockdown started and we're like here. This is wow. Our... Yeah, I know. And then... they must be so special to you. And your <laughs> they family. were very special. Yes, yes, <laughs> they are very special. Uh, and like, and we had that same that uh, that same moment of like uh, of like, wow, this is a, a true sign of friendship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, Cool. I, oh, we we already have questions coming in. Uh, uh -oh. but I'll get to those in a little bit. I don't. Uh, I don't have it up. I don't like to. No, no, no that's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm tracking them. <laughs> uh, but I I will um, uh, I will t give you today's topic, and we'll start Great. with that, and then we'll 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 go from there. So just to let you know, uh, the way that I do this is um, uh, like many schools, I have a multi-level uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, every week has a different uh, subject matter. Like if you were to go, it's a 48 week thing. So we, every week has a different thing. So I randomized all those weeks right. and, uh, and we're just chipping away at them. And the one that came to, up for you was specificity in Ooh. scenes, verbal, verbal specificity in scenes. That's a and, good one. Uh, yeah. And like, and, 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 uh, it's one of my favorite classes to teach. We actually, uh, believe this is in like level one week six or seven and we just start to talk about the idea um, i'll give you one of the teaching examples i i give and then we could we could go from there yeah uh so we're just like uh you know let's just say that it's a like a, a, a owner or a mechanic customer scene right mm -hmm. and you know it could start out very simply like you know uh sir you know we figured out what's wrong with your car uh, we got it fixed, right? And then, yeah, okay, we get what that scene's about. We know what's going on there. Uh, but what I tell my students, I'm like, you could change one word in that and it could change the entire tone of the scene and you could give a humongous gift to your scene partner. For example, I could start the same scene and be like, uh, uh, sir, your Tesla is ready, right? And then that tells the other person more about who they are. Or mm -hmm. I could start out the scene and say, uh, your VW bus is ready. That tells the other person who they are a little bit more. I could say, your Harley is ready. 
right? Your, yeah. uh, your, uh, you know, your Hummer is ready, whatever. And then just that little tweak in specificity just cracks open this uh, a lot more information to yeah. play with. Yeah. yeah. All of those cars are, and motorcycles are very cool. So <laughs> that person is a very cool person. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, I was like station wagon, Toyota Camry. <laughs> I went in a different direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, specificity. It's that's a great topic. You know, I automatically think of. Well, first of all, I think of Craig, my husband, my life partner and scene partner, <laughs> uh, because he's kind of to me uh, such a master at being specific and not to make this all about Craig, because this is an interview about me, <laughs> but no, uh, but uh, when I, when I started playing with him, it really upped my game in terms of having to rise to the occasion and be more mm. specific. And in turn, uh, it really pushed me to the next level as an improviser. And I kind of realized all of my favorite improvisers are incredibly specific mm -hmm. um, because it's not only naming things and uh, giving specifics for your scene partner, but it's also for the audience, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, then the audience can also make assumptions about the characters that you're playing or about the environment that you're in. Mm. Um, and so for me, specificity, uh, when, I'm in the, when, I, when I'm in the audience and, I, and an improviser is being specific, it, it really makes me feel like I'm in that world more mm -hmm. than if they're mm -hmm. being more general, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I no, I agree. Like, like those little, just those little bits of, uh, of, of just those small words, crystallize the reality for me so much more as an audience member. Like I'm, and right now I'm thinking a lot of the uh, quartet show you guys did last year mm. uh, for the Sarasota Improv Festival, and I just remember like little, just this little, these little moments of like the moment the word came out, the set right. crystallized in front. It of appears. Me. Yeah. Yeah. The picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I also think with be by being specific, you're helping ground uh, the scene that you're performing in in some sort of emotional truth. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, when I talk about grounding scenes, that's kind of my definition for it, which is specificity and relatable mm -hmm. human emotion, right? And mm -hmm. so it just gives the audience the opportunity to relate to what you're doing Mm -hmm. to understand where you're coming from and in my opinion to be to be able to laugh about yeah. what you're saying because they can relate to it because they, okay. they have experience with it right yes yeah okay so you're bringing up something that uh it's funny my last guest uh eileen i think we talked a yeah. little bit about this like the physicality uh, i watched it oh I yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh we we talked a little bit about the the laughter of recognition versus the laughter of right. uh, surprise. And what you're hitting in right now, like, uh, like, yes, like I, I find myself laughing just to hear the word of, you, you, you put in, you give it specificity. I find my, I suddenly start laughing. Yeah. And it's like, why am I laughing? Oh, it's because I, I, I recognize it, I see it, I identify with it or whatever. Uh, but, but there's something that, that, that tugs at me and brings me yeah. closer, yeah. It is, and, right, and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of the same, um, that same laugh pool, I'm gonna call it a laugh mm -hmm. pool. I just made this up. Yeah. <laughs> laugh pool that you have when there's a callback, right? It's like yes. instant recognition, but mm. specificity gives you that laugh, that callback laugh before you've actually called anything back. It's like <laughs> you're it's calling a, back to your own life. Exactly, it's a, it's a yeah. life callback. <laughs> it's a life callback. You, you just invented two new improv what? terms. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think too, like, um, I'm not, gosh, I wish I, I think, I wish I was better at, uh, at labeling things that are true. <laughs> Meaning like, even when you say car, it takes me a minute to be like, what are cars? Which cars do I know of? And so I'm always kind of a step behind in that sense. Not that I'm stupid. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, uh, Meaning not that I don't have information, but it does take me a second sometimes to think like, oh, that, that person's reading this book. What book? Oh, uh, you know, a historical fiction book. Okay. And then like going through the, the beats of like, what could that be? And something I, I think about a lot, and this kind of became more crystallized for me when I was teaching is like, 
it's also okay to make up specifics. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know? <laughs> uh, so you got me now thinking, okay, uh, this is great. I, uh, uh, on this week, one of the games that we play is uh, Seven Things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you play, right? Like you, like is I tell you. Is it Name Seven me, Things? Name Seven Things, right? Right. And I, like, and, and I don't know if you play it this way where you pass something around the circle and you have to name seven things before that thing comes back to you, mm -hmm. right? So if it's like a group of 10, uh, you pass, a, you know, like a, a, a pen or something. And the pen, before the pen gets back, you need to name these seven things. And I like that game. Uh, one, one reason why is because it, it, it's forcing you to be as specific as possible under and I'm gonna put this, uh, under pressure, right. right? Which I think sometimes in an improv scene, you have to you know, all, you know, the, time. All, all, all the, the time, all the time, all times. You have to be like, oh, where are we? <laughs> We're at this place. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of this hotel? Uh, you, you have to come. And I, it, I, it's happened to me. I don't know if it happens to you. I mean, it still happens to me. I should say. I don't know if it still happens to you where you cramp up on the details. You yes. know, it's like, uh, oh yeah, my 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 friend's name. Uh, and it's yes. like it, it, every four names come out of my mouth at once. Right. Uh, for sure. Yeah. And so when I tell my students, I'm like, okay, we're gonna start by trying to name as many specific things. But guess what? If you get to the the fifth thing and you can't think of anything, make it up. Yes. And it's okay. And just. Yeah. Whatever you say, it's going to, that, that is now truth. And we're just going to commit to the, to, to that thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's why, I mean, confidence is just so much of that, right? Even yeah. faking confidence, just yeah. saying it confidently, whether you feel confident about it or not, because if you pulled the audience afterwards, if you said it in such a way that it seemed real, mm -hmm. even if they knew that it was wrong, they might question it and be like, maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. Maybe there is a name called. Janitor, Janitor. Yeah, Janitor. How many times have I, not to say that I, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that you should pull phones out during shows, but I've Googled, <laughs> I've go, I'm like, wait, what, really? Yeah. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> like, uh, that's so convincing. Janitor must be a name, the way she it said it. It must be, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's my cousin's name, for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah. One question that did come up, you brought up, uh, you brought up Craig earlier. This question came up before you brought up Craig. Uh -huh. uh, and the question is from uh, Harrison Brookie from South Carolina. I don't know if you've uh, been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Harrison's oh, yeah. great. Hi, Harrison. Uh, uh, so he Super says, like, so you you started improv later later than your husband slash stage partner slash mm -hmm. life partner. Mm -hmm. Right. Was there a moment when it finally felt natural to play together? Yes. And it wasn't for quite a while. <laughs> mm. It really wasn't. It was, um, you know, he he had not only so much more experience in terms of probably like 15 years more experience than I did, but also um, we had slightly different backgrounds in terms of where we studied. Uh, he was, you know, very much of the IO um, education. <laughs> uh, and I did, I, I did take class at IO, but I had studied mostly at second city and UCB. And so I was kind of like, into game for quite a while patterns mm -hmm. and that sort of thing not that he couldn't play that way or wouldn't play that way but um what's my point my point is, is i just wasn't really able to hang for quite a while mm -hmm. um and it was just through repetition outside of that relationship um getting stage time with mm -hmm. groups and ensembles that he wasn't a part of um where i was able to kind of level up on my own and yeah. then I, because really, truly, we didn't until 2015, probably we weren't performing together regularly. And we had already been together for nine years at that point. Oh. So, um, but also like he had his groups and I had my groups and it wasn't ever mm -hmm. really, um, it wasn't even brought up. I don't think like occasionally we would jam together or whatever. <laughs> that sounds so weird, yeah. but you know, uh, yeah. and he was doing Dasariski pretty regularly. And then when Dasariski started to wind down, I was like, well, I could improvise with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like to travel too. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of when we started doing it. And then we we booked um, some shows at Second City where we were hosting a jam. And so we were performing every other week for a year, just okay. like wow. poor, very poorly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like doing a lot of bad shows for a long time. Uh, and then we started touring and yeah. yeah. Did that answer the question? I think it did. Yeah. Did I lose the was, thread was there? <laughs> no, no, you got it. <laughs> uh, so you got me interested in. Okay, so you 
geographically, so he must he was in Chicago. Yeah. And now you said Second City and UCB. So yes, in LA. You, in LA, both in LA. Yeah, well, I started at Second City in Chicago. Um, when I was 19, I started taking classes and I lived in Chicago for a couple of years. And then I moved to LA and I finished up in LA and really did a lot of performing at the Second City in LA for a long time. And then UCB opened up and then I started going there. Okay. okay. Um, so that was kind of my background. And then I did take class at IO, but I don't know that I, and I, I just didn't really perform there a lot. I wasn't as in that scene. Also, that was like his scene and I didn't want to, Yeah. I don't know. There's kind of a weird thing when you're a couple and yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's like, Oh, you want them to have their space and you want to have your space <laughs> Yeah. and uh, not be weird about it. <laughs> oh, I, I totally, I totally know what you're talking about. I, I wish I, uh, I mean, I, it's, uh, happened to me a couple of times, but I definitely try to make space and yeah, I, I, yeah. Like I, I want to show. I don't know if I want to show. It just feels more comfortable to be to to be independent from one. I don't know. I can't. I yeah. can't describe. It, but I know. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, my my wife and I. Um, so she does mostly musical improv, but she keeps pushing me. She's awesome. Like, we got to do a show together. Something I can't do at all. I can't do it either. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could fake it. Uh, but I, I can't do it. But yeah, she uh, she keeps wanting to do a, a two person show, and I'm I'm nervous about it because of what you just described. Because I'm like, I think it's gonna be like this really weird. Yeah, but that's kind of exciting. Okay. I will say some of our worst shows. <laughs> well, first of all, those are the ones we totally remember. <laughs> <laughs> but like, also, it's so. I, and I know that you're you're at this point and beyond this point you have so much improv experience but where you just get to a point where you're like uh oh, i'm probably gonna mess this up and but then i'll be okay <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah right you know what i mean <laughs> like yeah. early on in my improv career and you know for a long time for for a very long time it would i would come home and i would cry after a bad show yeah. and now it's like well that was that sucked mm-hmm. I, i'm glad you're bringing this up because this is something i that i talk about with my students quite a bit. Um, and, you know, and I, I always uh, look back at like the first two years of my career. And I always feel like it's like the first two years of many of my students' careers where they're just, they have that that thing that like, they, they will beat themselves up. Yeah. And and I want to show them, I'm like, one, one thing that I, I do um, uh, regularly is I, I won't do show, I won't do notes at, immediately after shows. Like I'll save them for rehearsal or, or, or something like that. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, I want you to, I want you to feel comfortable stepping away from that, and and just letting it blow into the wind. And then we'll, I will talk about it later. And so that that becomes a big thing for me uh, at, mm-hmm. at a certain point in my improviser's career. I'm like, step away from it. It's okay. Yes. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Give it mm-hmm. space. And yes. Yeah. Totally. And was, and now uh, there's okay. I don't I don't want to say it's fun to fail. I know people say that. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's totally true <laughs> <laughs> for me, but it is, uh, it definitely makes you better the next time. Yeah. Maybe that's obvious, but it, yeah. it's, it's, that's more how I look at it now, as opposed to having nightmares about it, which I used to do. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like replaying the scene multiple times, like, Oh, yeah. next time, uh, this is a trap, right? Uh, next time this happens, I'm going to say this. And that's yes. the thing. It's not never going to happen again. It's never going to happen. Yeah. 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 And, and like, and that's, that's one of the toughest things to convince um, at least some of my uh, beginner students. You know, I, I tell them, I'm like, I don't, I've never even come close to doing the same scene twice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There've been premises that have been similar, but the dialogue's different. My scene partner's different. The audience is different. So many variables are different that it's not the same experience again. Oh, you're making me miss it so much. I'm <laughs> I really do. Have you done any online stuff? I have, I have. And I'm very, I'm very torn about it. And I actually, it's kind of how I feel about short form. <laughs> <laughs> which is like I really admire the people who are doing it and I just feel I just feel like I'm walking through mud <laughs> when I'm doing it. and and that's kind of where I'm at with online improv right now but I I've just recently had a couple of really great rehearsals with teams and I kind of felt like we opened up something interesting and okay. not that not that it's new or revolutionary god no because so many people are doing really cool things right now but for me it was like finally where when I stopped treating it like mm-hmm. 
real, like not, I don't want to say real, it is real, yes. <laughs> but in person, in person improv, when I stopped treating it that way, I, yeah. I, I found new things and that's exciting, right? Mm-hmm. It, it is. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I'm like, right, the, right. That's exciting, right? <laughs> Uh, the, the, uh, the 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 folks that made it real for me that made me like see it as a as a thing and not just yeah. sort of like a band aid. I think I was treating it like that for a long time. I'm like, oh, this is a uh, a band aid just to keep me sane creatively mm. and to just keep the brand of the theater active, right? Uh, right? And all of that. But then I was like, oh, wait a minute, there is actually something here. The 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 group that did that for me was uh, Parallel the Gramophone. Yes. Yeah. I saw them do it, and then they invited me to do one show. Ah, uh, that's awesome. And I was like. This is fun. This was fun. They're so great. And like, I yeah. loved, um, I've, I've watched some of their shows and I, I've watched some of their Q and A's talking about online improv. And I like, I just really appreciate how enthusiastic they are about it and how, mm-hmm. like, it's inspiring. They're being, they're, yeah. they're, they're doing a great job of inspiring mm-hmm. <laughs> all of us, I think. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of, uh, tells me that there is going to be, oh, and this is, this is a weird thing to say, that there's going to be some version of it i think, I think so too this. yeah uh, i think it's yeah definitely I, I, i've told my my community i'm like there won't be any more canceled rehearsals due to weather right like, that's, that's, <laughs> so not gonna, that's not gonna that's not gonna be a thing anymore <laughs> did that happen in florida i guess hurricane uh, hur- weather <laughs> hurricane weather yes yeah we, we've had to cancel classes and and uh that's funny rehearsals, i mean not funny doing, but yeah no but yeah it's it, we're still doing our weekly classes and we're like all right i guess we could yeah Every, the whole world knows how to use this now and yes so it's we'll so crazy yeah. i mean it's really it's almost the thought the the weight of everything that's happened this year is almost too much to think about <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know like the the weight of the change and the and also how everybody's adapted is really incredible um yeah. and i think you're totally right i think that there will always be some version of this which i'm mm-hmm. cool with yeah I'm, you know I'm going to get better at it. <laughs> I promise. Goals. I like this. <laughs> it's important to have goals. Yeah. I, I, I like how you, I, I, I like how you think of it like short form. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> well, and that's like such a controversial thing. I know. Cause people are like, and I do think short form is incredibly important. And like, I'm gl- so happy I learned how to do it. If you want to make money doing improv, you got to know how to do short yeah. form. <laughs> but like, I, I just have to, you know, speak my truth and say that it's not for me necessarily yeah. <laughs> although i enjoy watching it that is uh yeah I, I i um i was in long form in boston until i moved here uh to sarasota and that is the money maker here the show yeah. show and that is our weekly show and it, it was in my contract it's like yeah. you gotta do and so i'm like all right we'll do it and i i, yeah. I ended up uh you start doing it on a weekly basis it kind of and to be re-exposed to it gave me a whole new appreciation to it. I it's bet. just like a very different discipline, uh, yeah. very different muscles. I, for me, it's just like a, it's a sport. It's like, I do, okay, I'm switching from one sport to another. There's some of the same mechanics are, are there, but right. used differently. Yeah. And I think, you know, some of the pushback that I've gotten when I've said, like, it's not really for me. It's like, oh, you're a long form improviser and like, you're too good for short for, or whatever. And like, actually, I think that I'm not good at short form. <laughs> Like, it's the opposite where I'm like, <laughs> people, there are really brilliant improvisers who do this really well. And, yeah. um, and I think it actually goes back to that delay that I have sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it's, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's a thing that I have. Yes. Really and oh, I'm 40 I... well, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep pretending anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's who I, I am. <laughs> the, uh, you, you make me think of a, uh there's some improvisers uh some short formers that i admire that think so fast yes yes i'm just like i it's incredible i, I, I can't yeah it's like looking at it I, I use sports analogies a lot to talk about improv and i'm like it's like looking at a pro athlete do something i'm like how do you do that and yes. i like i see him come up with I'm, i don't like puns and maybe i don't like puns because i'm not good at them but i see someone like just come up with some the quickest word play yeah um, and it's really amazing it's impressive yeah it's, yeah it's it's next level very impressive but <laughs> but i'll do it like, yeah i'll do it <laughs> i'm just telling you i can't guarantee i'm gonna come up with that 185 thing <laughs> do you have a favorite short form game um i really like new choice which is also called take that back which is also called what do you say call it, it again say it again 
I really do like that because I like getting to that point where (laughs) I'm just mush in my brain and I don't know what's going to come out. Like, that's really fun. And, and the fact that that's part of the game. Yeah. Like that's the enjoyable part of the game is when it doesn't make sense. (laughs) When you get, when you get to that third or fourth or fifth, take that back. And it's like a bubble machine political party or whatever. (laughs) Here we go. Uh, a life callback and a interview callback. Yeah. So this goes back to like the seven things, the seven things game where it's like uh, in, in the new, in new choice when they're dinging or whatever, yes. however they do it, the first few might be logical, but then I'm like, especially when they're messing with you and they're like ding, ding, ding or whatever, or they keep saying new choice. The first three or four might be like logical, but then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start saying things like you just said, bubblegum political party, <laughs> but I'm going to sell it. I'm like, I'm just going to say the randomest things, right? but I'm going to sell it. And then if they stop, then that, and now I've got to commit to whatever thing I just said. Yes. And, and, and for me, it's like that seven things game. It's like I three, four, five, I can't think of anything else. So I'm just going to say whatever and just sell it and commit to it. Totally. And the audience loves it. Yeah, I, I love it. I love watching that when somebody's brain breaks open <laughs> and you just see like the words coming out and they don't know what they're saying. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. I, oh, uh, somebody has called me out. Sorry, Anthony. No, I, 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 I don't like doing puns. Let me put it that way. I don't like doing puns. I, <laughs> I'm telling you, short form improvisers are also a little sensitive. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> I don't like doing puns because I'm not good at it. I know Anthony and he's really good at puns. Anthony is painfully good at puns. If you know, like those, those punsters yeah. that make you groan, that, that's, that's Anthony. Yes. Anthony, <laughs> I, I want to hear your puns. Give me a call, Anthony. Uh, oh, no, that's so funny though. Cause I actually took it where you were saying like how much you respected pun makers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anthony's like, no, I, punning, punning is great. Punning is <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, no, that's, oh, that's the great. nerdy, like little improv opinions. It's so, it's so fun to, and I'm, I'm totally guilty of this myself, which is like listening to improv podcasts and watching things like this, you know, yeah. and getting to hear people were like, this is, this is how, this is, this is it for me. Like, this is how yeah. I like to improvise. And you think like, oh, but what about this? And you can't, <laughs> you, you can't help but automatically playing devil's advocate. We're like, oh, yeah. but also this, and you know, <laughs> it's so, it's so fun. Now, if you, um, what interests do you have that if the scene was about that interest, like the specificity would be, like you could tap right into something, like is there a hobby oh, that you have, something that you do? Oh my gosh, this is such a nerve wracking question. Or, or like, you know, like if, you know, let's Here, just say that, yeah, we're on no. the sidelines and the audience gives a suggestion, we're like, oh, Carla's got this. Here's part of my, and this, I've been spiraling a lot this summer of like, what am I doing with my life? Everything's falling apart. And it's, and I keep coming back to, I need more hobbies. Mm. And so this is like an interesting question. And the only answer I can think of is Jane Austen. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. Like I know a lot about Jane Austen and Jane Austen novels. Um, So if you ever wanted to improvise a Jane Austen scene, I could be very specific, I think. Oh, have you have you uh, have you done that? Uh, like I know because I know there's a lot of Jane Austen improv. I haven't, too. and you know, yeah, I should, right? Maybe this is my new thing, Will. Maybe yeah, help me figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been journaling for weeks, and it takes a Facebook Live interview <laughs> to figure it out. Uh, yeah, that's the first thing that popped into my mind when you said that. Beyond the, like the panic of I don't know anything. <laughs> also soap op- soap operas from the 90s i think maybe i have soap operas from the 90s okay like a good grasp on yeah those two things so when you get when you get back to la you gotta chat with the folks at impro theater i think they, they, i they know have a, i think they have Gosh. a jane austen group right? i love the i mean they're talk about like inspiring and next yeah. level they're incredible i haven't done much genre improv because um why carla because I think it's because when I first started improvising, I had such a hard time of letting go of plot. Mm -hmm. And it was like really a thing for me for for years. And then once I figured out how to not play with some sort of story playing out, Mm -hmm. I kind of discovered my improv voice. So maybe it's time to revisit. (laughs) 
<laughs> does that make sense? Does it that does sound make sense. But, uh, but this is what I started to think of. I'm like, what if, what if? Okay, uh, so when did, I know nothing about Jane Austen. So when does that take place? <laughs> uh, 1700s. <laughs> Imagine the late a, 1700s. Uh, and where, like England? Mm-hmm. Depends. Um, Bath, perhaps? Oh, Bath? Uh, imagine, London? Imagine a late 1700s English improv troupe. So what if it was in the style of Jane Austen, but yeah. only in that the performers were from that era? And then, like, what would... <laughs> sorry, I'm like, So you don't need to worry, like, you don't need to worry about a plot. You're just, like, characters from that time yes. that are performing improv. So the only references they have... That's very part funny. Of that. <laughs> also, I just had a mini heart attack. Maybe it's the 1800s, <laughs> the early 1800s. Don't tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I will not tell you. I, we'll see if somebody I said it with us. so much confidence and <laughs> that I convinced myself. Uh, no, that's a really funny idea. Look, no, you don't have to worry about, about plot. You just do a montage of scenes. Yes, all- <laughs> you're totally right. Of course. And, and I'm not even saying that genre stuff relies on plot. So I don't mean to like put labels no, on know, that either. But, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I think we just discovered our next improv group. <laughs> I'm giving you three months to read as much Jane Austen as possible. <laughs> okay. The, the, the bath players, or we'll have to come up with something. We'll ask our punsters <laughs> to come up with something. I'm uh, sending you a, a, a suit, tails, I think, <laughs> with the long yes. tails, which you won't be able to see on screen, but you'll feel it. It'll help you get into character. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, Jane, all right, Jane Austen, that's good. I'm trying to think of what I would. I, I like baseball. Oh, friends. I, I know friends. friends. Oh, okay. baseball? Did you just say baseball? That's probably like me. Like I, I know so much about baseball. If there's a scene about baseball, I could probably come out and be like, let's do a scene about baseball. I have no, I have no idea about baseball. So we, yeah, should, <laughs> we should do that too. What if it was like Jane Austen playing baseball? <laughs> yes, I love it. We got it. We got our, we got our show. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling about baseball right now? Are you, are you torn up about it? I am torn up about it because I love that it's back. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm scared for the players and what they yeah. have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, although I, I was watching my team shower tales. <laughs> Sorry, uh, they were responding on 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 the Facebook. Uh, what uh, did yeah, they say? I, uh, shower tales was uh, the name of our group. They played Love off a of bath. Played off a of bath. Yes. Love it. Uh, so, somebody says that they totally watched the heck out of that. Thank you, Charlotte. Yes, you <laughs> uh, but yeah, I. Uh, my, so my team is the, the White Sox from uh, Chicago, and um, I was watching the game, and uh, it was so cute. Like, they, they weren't high-fiving each other, but they would do, like, these little, like, finger scratches, like, from, Aww. like, two feet away. So they'd be like, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's so cute. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's, I'm, I'm scared for those guys, I, you know, but they're, they're also, they have a lot of resources that I hope yes. they do. Yeah. Yes, that's true. They have... A, a huge industry behind them paying for right. tests and stuff, right? So, right. I don't know. What a weird world. Yeah. Can't do that I, online. Can't do baseball online. It, we, can't no, do you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did nerd out because I'm a baseball uh, like nerd. Uh, there is, you, you just said you can't do it online. And I'm like, oh, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a guy created a website uh, that runs an imaginary baseball league with imaginary players for imaginary cities. And wow. you could you could buy a team and then just manage it. And so I am living right now uh, through my, my made up team. There you go. And it's not a video game. It's not a video a video game. You're not like playing, you're just managing them. So you're just I'm not, I'm not judging if it was. Uh, thank you, yeah. I, you looked at me like, no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 it was more just like, wow, interesting. <laughs> like there's all kinds of new stuff. I need yeah. to stop staring at the wall so much and like <laughs> get, get some hobbies for real. Do you do that much? Like there's some days where I'm like, I've been staring at the wall for like 30 minutes now. <laughs> I, um, I need to do that more. Yeah, you're busy. I, to, I, I make myself busy though, and I think yeah. I think it's because I'm I'm scared of not being busy, and I don't know yeah. what, where that fear is. Yeah, I, I like I make myself do things. Mm-hmm. For example, during lockdown, I've taken up I, I'm like going through Duolingo French further than I've ever oh, gone before. 
You're and amazing. So, uh, but, uh, but the other thing I've taken up, uh, Sean McGowan's a guitar player, so I've taken up this. Oh my gosh. And so, I, I, and <laughs> I'm just gonna play one note, because it's one of the, uh, so. That's, that's a incredible. G. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I've literally done nothing but walk my dog and go to the grocery store for like three months. I'm very <laughs> impressed. Oh, well, I, I, I think that, as I was saying, I think I'm afraid of slowing down because I, yeah, I know, I know that I am. I don't know what the, I don't know what's behind that. Like, I, I probably need somebody to tell me like what is behind that fear. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it won't yeah. be me. I won't tell you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but I, I can, I, I. I've gone through times in my life where I am that person. So I can mm -hmm. definitely relate to that feeling yeah. of uh, keeping busy as much as possible. For some reason though, this summer, I'm just like, where's the hammock? Like, Oh, that's good. You know? <laughs> that is. I might I be going a, a little insane, but that's okay. My, my wife does a good job of slowing me down on Sundays. She's like, stop. Yeah. Just stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, which, which is good. I, um, uh, and we're down to like our last few minutes here. Oh, wow. Uh, it went but, so uh, fast. I know. We've done seven minutes. Let's say it's six and a half minutes. Uh, I had so many questions lined up, but they all got stuck. Um, <laughs> I probably, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let, uh, this, is one, this is one of them. One of them just came back. Uh, so w what improv-wise, mm -hmm. we already know what you're not doing. You're not doing online improv. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what, what are you doing? What, where, where, where are you now in your sure. improv life? Okay. So I was doing a lot of online improv. Um, I'm just realized my glasses, you can't even see my eyes. This is weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I could. That's the I way could. it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> somehow I managed to not look at myself this whole time. Uh, yeah, I was doing a lot of improv early online improv early on. And then I was teaching a lot online and then I just kind of, because I, I work at Westside Comedy Theater in Santa Monica, and actually, I would love to talk to you about this sometime, maybe not right this second, <laughs> uh, which is this idea of like balancing the creative and the manager, right? So mm -hmm. I, man I help manage this theater. And so it was really um, challenging to be shut down with one day, no not even a day notice, right? And then having to try to get everything up online as soon as possible. Um, and also like, I'm just being honest here, keep that positive face for the community, which is like, yeah. you know, they look to you to, you know, be excited. And, and I was, and I was like, okay. And I got myself excited about it. And then I think I just, um, oh, this might be too much real, but like, I, I really kind of hit a wall of like, and I don't know what it's like in other places, obviously, but in LA, it was just so sad. Cause like we, everything shut down, like immediately, almost immediately we had to wear masks everywhere. And it was just like, uh, what am I talking about here? So I had to like take care of my mental health, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then I made a decisive um, decision, decisive decision to <laughs> take a break and just step back for a month. And so that was July. And I did a little bit of coaching this month and that was actually really inspiring, like I said. So Come uh, at the end of August, I'm going to start coaching again more regularly. And then in September, I'm doing a class with Rise Comedy Theater, which is formerly oh, Voodoo in Denver. Denver. Yes. Yes. And um, I'm doing a close quarters class, close quarters from a distance is what I've called yes. it. <laughs> and I'm actually really excited about it because I did do a close quarters online class and I, we figured out some stuff to make it work in the Zoom platform uh, which is different than how it would be in person. And I'm really excited to experiment with that and get back to my creative as opposed to my manager. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And I, you'll have to send me the link later because I, I would love to, uh, for people to know about this class. That's great. Thank it's you. Such yeah. A, such a great format and uh, for you to teach it or for, for people to learn it from you would be it's awesome. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. So I'm yeah. excited about that. And then I think, um, probably in the fall, Craig and I will start doing online shows again, okay. but we're just, you know, we're just kind of taking a step back and making sure that we're doing everything. I don't want to speak for him. I want to make sure that I'm doing everything for the right reasons, not because I feel like I have to, but because I find joy in it. Yes. Yeah. And I'm getting to the point now where I've 
taken a break and I'm starting. That's, I mean, it was this, this, uh, when you reached out on Monday, I was like, okay, this feels like a good way to <laughs> dip my toes back into this improv online stuff with Will, who's my friend. And like, yeah. I think I'll really enjoy that. So I, I do kind of go through this though, as an improviser, uh, every few years, I do need to take a break now and again. Yeah. And yes. fill that life well. I find that when I don't have that life well full, I'm doing improv for all of the wrong reasons. And it's miserable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, the, that last, the, the last few minutes of everything you said is so important. And I hope uh, everyone who's listening and who will listen, uh, you know, takes a lot from that. I think that taking care yeah. of yourself is so, so important. It's really important right now. I mean, always, yeah. but especially right now. Yeah. You reminded me of how, um, you know, I, I was talking right now about how I, keep myself busy but I do remember the first month of this was very weird for me I was sleeping mm. in and I never sleep in and I was just like sleeping in and and you're at you asked me the question you just stare at the walls uh <laughs> and I'm like I don't I don't know if that happened to me but I do remember just lying in bed scrolling through my phone yeah and just and like doing nothing yes uh and then I kind of hit a point where I'm like okay well this you're 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 becoming a different person. So you need mm. to kind of pull yourself out of this. Right. Yeah. And you're back, man. You're doing it all. You're learning a new <laughs> language. You're, <amazing. laughs> you're incredible. I love it. Oh. I, it is really inspiring. And yeah, I love improv so much. And sometimes I love it so much that I hate it mm. <laughs> because those are part of the same thing. Right. And I, when I'm hating it, it's always because I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. So I'm doing it for my job or I'm doing it to make somebody else happy because, you know, somebody has asked me to do something. Um, and so it's really important for me to make sure that I'm finding joy right now. Mm -hmm. And this has been great. Carla, this was, oh, this was <laughs> so nice. It was like, a, oh, oh, here we go. Call back. It was like a warm bath. Yes. <laughs> it was. No, I mean, just like not only talking uh, the artistic side of it, but the personal side of it and self care side of this, of, of doing improv. I, um, yeah. Just very quickly before we finish, like, it reminds me of how we, uh, we took like a month off from rehearsals. And the first rehearsal we had back, which was a virtual rehearsal, I think half the cast cried. It was mm -hmm. just like, uh, and 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 now we haven't stopped rehearsing and and when i say rehearsing we we haven't really done much we just sort of are there for each other every week share how our weeks were the ups to downs um yeah but behind all of that behind the camaraderie and the sharing uh is all of our improv time together that we built together as as an ensemble mm. that kind of has created the trust and support and we're, you know now we're we're all taking care of each other in a very different way yeah uh, as, as we as we move through this and it's going to make your ensemble even stronger i mean i know yeah. this is again like an obvious thing that i'm saying but it really i think that's something so cool about this time that we're all living through which is yeah. we're having to rely on each other or ask each other for different things than we normally would and therefore sharing more of ourselves than we normally would which mm -hmm. is really interesting and yeah, yeah. um yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Well, this was this was this was great. I um I wanted to get back to talk a little bit more about uh about more specificity stuff, but we are out of time. Yeah. Oh, we hit we, some good things. This was great. Yeah, Thank you. This, this was a lot of fun. I hope I hope that uh I hope it went well. <laughs> I did. It did work. I get so nervous about these things. I'm dumb. <laughs> it went. I think it went very well. It looks like everyone's really happy, and, I, and people are very excited to hear from you. And so it was nice to, to have you here. And That's so uh, nice. what, what are you doing uh, uh, the rest of tonight? The rest of tonight, we are going to watch the John Lewis documentary. That just came out. We just rented cool. it today. So we'll be crying. I'll be crying. Oh. <laughs> but it's yeah. good. It's like, it's like life well stuff, it's right? It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's inspiration. It's going to be, it'll be good. Uh, yeah. So that's what we're up to. And, and then, yeah, man, I wish I had more to say. I'm reading a lot of books right now. And so that's kind of mm. where my head is. <laughs> that's oh, all it good, is. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Could you uh, name uh, one... Name seven books. <laughs> uh, I'm reading this book called The Glass Hotel okay. um, by this woman who wrote 
a novel called Station Eleven, which is actually about a virus and, oh. a, pa- and a pandemic. And so I was like, I'm going to pick up this other one. And she's a really great writer. So I can't remember her name because I didn't, uh-huh. because I, I can make it. Her name is Annie <laughs> Messersmiths. Annie oh, Messersmiths. Great author. Yeah. Or was it Jet Jettery? I forgot to remember. <laughs> I forgot too. <laughs> yep, but, but that's who it is. Yep. That's who it is. Annie Messersmith. Me- Messersmith. Yep. Measure Smith. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. She's um, wonderful. <laughs> Carla, this was uh, this was uh, fantastic, and uh, thanks for having me. Th- thank you for being here. Thank you everyone for uh, tuning in to uh, the FSC Improv interview uh, every Friday night at seven. We are going to have another guest next week. I'm mm. in the middle of booking that now, uh, and so uh, we will uh, be confirming that on Monday. But you'll uh, tell me you- after, right? You'll tell. I'm going to tell after. you immediately after. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for again, for tuning in. My name is Will. Thank you, Carla. Thank and you. uh You're the best. You, well you really time. are. I say that a lot, but I really mean it for you. You're the best. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everybody. Love you, Carla. Take care. Love you. Thanks. Bye. You. We're done. Yay. Yay. All right. That was so.